we run through the steering board um, projects. It's in the project number one in the steering repo. I haven't connected to Zoom yet, so I can't post it to the chat. Um, and we go through the mainly the in progress column. Um, and the reason we thought it would be a good idea to invite more folks is so more people can help um, work on some of these issues and uh, participate more directly than just watching the videos after the fact. <clears throat> I don't know if Aaron is on. A lot of times he uh, runs through the board. I don't know that there's nothing else is in the agenda right now. Um, I did want to make people aware that uh, we just recently added a concept of user groups. Uh, Brendan documented that uh, and I reviewed the PR so that got merged so that adds a new kind of group. We've been discussing it for quite a while. Uh, there were previous discussions of birds of a feather groups or informal groups groups that are not the same as uh, working groups necessarily focused on a specific topic. Uh, cluster Ops was um, sort of a working group and that SIG, we're kind of cleaning up the organizations. Um, so we're, we've archived some SIGs recently. Uh, so thanks for the folks who've been helping with that officially in the community repo if you take a look. Um, and this is sort of part of that cleanup. So right now there are discussions about converting the big data SIG to a user group uh, because it is uh, not really working on code in the Kubernetes code base. Um, so we'll continue to look at how we can more effectively organize the project. Uh, the other main thing we've been pushing on in that regard, and there was a big push before KubeCon is charters. So we have this charters meta issue and most of the charters, at least initial versions are in. I think SigDocs was um, one that was still active. Phil, do you know anything about that? Yeah, let me pull that up. It was, uh, we we're just getting back to it after folks being out on break. Uh, but I left some comments, I'll pull up in the state right now. I think you know, and we also left off some discussions around charter and role and specialness of SIG architecture. Uh, yeah, I want to discuss that more in SIG architecture. I have some recent thoughts about that that are sort of a lot more aligned with what the project needs and the project's values. The docs, by the way, is uh, looks to have a goal end of day Thursday for new revision. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's the main one that's actually actively making progress. Um, and the others are on hold. So I think we'll be in good shape once we get the docs charter merged. Um, the next in progress issue is document what working groups are and how to form and disband. Uh, I think that was, a lot of that was done. So I'm looking at um, what is left. So notes from Aaron says document the working groups, mail code and associated repos that's been closed and add a field to sigs.yaml to list sigs that a working group spans. So I think that's why this issue is still open. Uh, Paris, do you, I see you open that issue. Do you have any uh, insight into any progress on that? I see Nikita commented on it. Um, there is no progress. I think we were, I think, um, no, actually, I'm sorry. There is uh, been PR progress. Merged. Yeah, PR merged. Uh, it's up. Uh, I think we were just waiting on SIGs to fill in what their, um, what the uh, what working groups they have responsibility over or touch or sponsor. Oh, so it's not that um, the working groups are in SIGs.yaml and they refer to the SIGs, it's the other way around? Uh, it's... The SIGs refer to the working groups? The SIGs refer to the working groups, correct. Yep. Do you want to revert that? Uh, I don't know. We can try it. Okay. 
Uh, I mean, right now we have a contributor who mapped out most of it. So we're just kind of getting all that stuff confirmed right now. But we were initially welcoming SIG leads and chairs to fill that in on their own. Um, so we're going to try to get that filled in within the next two weeks. OK, so how are we reaching out to SIG leads? I have to confess, I don't know that I saw a request for that. Yeah, um, it was sent in the need to know email from, I think, two weeks ago. Or OK, so. I did look and at that. that. Yeah. Um, um, that was sent just to direct directly to SIG chairs. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Brian. Uh, yeah, Dims. Should Brian. somebody share their screen? I uh, maybe I can't share mine for various reasons. I'm also flipping back and forth between uh, a number of things. You just want the a board? Yeah, share the board. project I board. Can I can share. It. Oh, you but if we present the project board, then we can't see the people. Okay. Yep, George has got it. And there goes George, yep. Yeah. Thanks, okay. George. Thank you. Thanks, George. Um, so if people are raising their hands, we won't be able to see with the board presented. I can see it, so I'll, okay. I can fly, I can fly folks, sure. Um, yeah, so we're about in the middle of the second column there, the in-progress column. Uh, so it looks like the document what working groups are is almost done. I do see a lingering issue from Michelle in the agenda doc about adding some more meat to the definition of a working group, is Michelle on? No, Michelle wasn't able to make it today. Okay. Um, so we should figure out whether that's still current or whether it's been addressed. Um, you know, I will say that the, you know, the governance stuff, I'm not personally super happy with sort of the way that stuff is organized. I don't think, you know, it's kind of grown organically. So I, well, there was a, uh, an open issue to merge and reorganize some of the docs did yeah. that. Oh, I'm did, working on that. I'm sorry. I just, too, I just clued in. Uh, um, this is why it's useful to have uh, yeah, other people here. Does. Which <laughs> is, you're welcome to do it. I just think that, you know, we just want to make sure that folks aren't stepping on each other's toes here. Yep. No, and I'll, I'll share, uh, I'll share the doc with everyone right now that I'm working on. It's, it's roughly, I'd say, six dependencies that I'm com that I'm combining. Um, so that's why I did it in a doc versus a PR because I just wanted to list out the the tasks and things like that. Um, but I'll share with that. I'll share everybody with that. Uh, excuse me. I will share with everyone on the line right now um, on the agenda with that link. Cool. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it has grown organically, and there's still might be some stuff to clean up uh, around, you know, the contributor ladder and the different kinds of groups and things like that. Um, that issue, the issue about cleaning that up, I don't see in the tracking board. Hmm. I thought we had it here. Um, maybe we might want to add that to the tracking board. If someone can pick up that. I think the issue is in the community repo. Um, is that just for the Contributor ladder or just uh, just the overlapping governance docs. There is one issue about oh yeah, rationalize. Here it is. It is uh, 1997 in the community repo. A fine year. Sure. Um, so how do we add add a card? Uh, anyway, I'll figure that out later. Um, Formalized subprojects. Uh, actually, maybe someone knows if anything is going on there. But the, we have created the notion of formalized the notion of subprojects. Um, every subprojects roll up to SIGs. That is what bridges the um, code governance using owners files with the SIG governance. Um, the work that remains to be done there is uh, also on the automation front, similar to the working group stuff. Uh, we have owner's files listed in six.yaml, um, but there's still work that people want to do to consolidate owner's files, because we have like 5,000 owner's files, and to make the lists of people in the, um, with the different roles, approvers, reviewers, and so on for subprojects more centrally managed. Um, I think there was some work in contributor experience being done on that to um, related to the work to synchronize or to program GitHub teams using uh, checked in files. Yep. Christoph would have an update on that. 
Um, I don't though. So we, we should probably yeah. um, have someone go through these things before our meeting so we can chase down the status on those or have those people show up here uh, so we can get an update of the status. Um, <clears throat> the cleanup audit of working groups, ah, that one I mentioned before, I'll, I'll bump that one up since I mentioned it first. Um, yeah, and that one is underway. A lot of the, you know, big data we're looking at converting to a user group, um, and that, that one was a SIG. Uh, but we have a number of working groups that either are more or less done, um, or um, uh, really should be subprojects. So we've been reaching out to those working groups to figure out the status. Is Derek on? And, uh, Derek had mentioned that re the resource management working group, which has existed for a long time, uh, might be able, might be ready to wind down and they could write a retrospective of uh, about the work, what the working group accomplished and things like that. So that seems like that would be good. Um, then the last item in the in progress column is uh, license scanning. And as I recall, um, we have an owner for that. Dims, do you have any state yes. on that? Uh, so the latest update is the Contribex has a subproject. Um, a few of us, Nikita, myself, uh, uh, Stephen Augustus, and uh, Steve and Winslow, uh, the four of us are participating in that right now. The idea is to um, try to see if we can use automated tools or manual tools to identify which licenses we use uh, and whether they are compatible, uh, whether they are uh, in the list of the approved whitelist or not, uh, and uh, send the list of um, the ones that are not in the approved uh, list to the CNC for governing board. Essentially, Steven takes care of that. Uh, so at this point, I don't know if uh, the CNCF uh, governing board uh, body has uh, approved them or not. Michelle, do you have an update on that? Michelle isn't able to join us. Dan okay. says there will be a vote in March and a comment on the OK. Um, yeah. Is the idea that the whitelist for dependencies will be uh, a superset of the whitelist for um, active project code? Like uh, right now, Apache 2, I believe, is the only approved license for CNCF projects. Is de uh, our dependencies, dependencies there, have there, is a, there is a list, including MIT and uh, um, a few other licenses. We've yes. documented that uh, in uh, um, one of the files. I'll, I'll when we are when I'm done talking, I'll pull that up and add add to the uh, doc. Okay, uh, but we have documented the currently approved whitelist. It is like six to eight licenses. Steven, were you saying something? Yeah. So just just to note that it's actually a, a, a sub project of Sig Relief, um, not Contribex. Um, but right. yes, there is a there's a PR there's a PR from Nikita, and I think uh, Steve made some edits on it that include the whitelist. Um, okay, I found that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it, it, it is a, a list of about 10 to 12. Um, the, the ones that are up for approval, I believe, have already tentatively been approved uh, around a few HashiCorp products um, that are listed. I, I can find the email thread later. Right. Um, so one, uh, one major thing that we need to do here is, uh, at this point, uh, the main KK repositories uh, the repository is good. Um, you know, it, uh, the only thing that was uh, that was pending wa uh, was uh, will be you know approved in the CNC governing body. But the problem is, all the other repositories that vendor uh, code from KK um, still have really old uh, licenses. So uh, we have to somehow figure out how to update the rest of the repositories from the main KK repositories over a period of time uh, so that uh, everybody else is clean as well. So, so one of the notes there is that, um, so FASA, the scanning tool that we're currently using, um, has the ability to set our configure policies 
for the project. Um, so now that we have the list of whitelist whitelisted licenses uh, for the CNCF, we can build a policy around those and then rerun scans across the uh, the Kubernetes uh, org repos and get a report on that. Okay, so is there any action that steering needs to take now that there is a SIG release subproject, or should we just remove this from our board? Um, so we have a we have an alternate tracking umbrella issue in SIG release already, so we can feel free to close the steering one. Okay, cool. Uh, and yeah, the only other thing I need to mention here is uh, right now it uh, the license scanning the manual process is done on ad hoc basis. We are trying to see if we can synchronize it with the uh, SIG release schedule and try to do it. Um, you know when we try to lock down the code and the features are uh, you know we, when we lock down the features. So, I, James, would you would you think of doing that for enhancements freeze or for code freeze? Uh, I would let, leave that up to you, Stephen, uh, as, okay. as a sick release lead. Why All don't right. you do some periodics? I'm just kind of curious from a logistics standpoint. Mm -hmm. Sorry? So we're, so we're thinking baseline uh, at, at least as many, but uh, FOSS also has the, the ability to do periodics. So once we configure the license policy, we would probably look at doing the periodics as well. Right. I mean, there'll always be a nightly one. Um, that will be that we'll be publishing, but this one is uh, the more formal one uh, that uh, that Stephen Winslow does uh, by hand, uh, at least right now, and he will be continuing to do that. Uh, the one that he's doing by hand until we are uh, okay with the tool and what it provides, uh, you know, the fossa tool. Do you happen to know what uh, repo the tracking issue is in? I'll just post it and close the other one, the steering one. So it's in it's in SIG release. I think it's already cross-linked to this the steering one. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, the end of our in progress uh, items. Do any other steering members have uh, other Issues they wanted to bring up. I, I should add something in progress, which is updating the steering committee charter to reflect uh, the other charters for the other SIGs. And and the work on that I have to do is uh, I have to go find the existing charters and make sure that they're consistent with the proposed changes for the steering committee charter, and then update the SIGs.yaml file to make sure everything's discoverable. So it'll be actually a couple of PRs. So looking back through our last meeting, um, we have bug bounty approved recommendation, but it's still showing in the to uh, backlog, sorry, the to do list basically. Is that something that we just need to move in this complete evaluation of potential bug bounty vendors? Um, I think that is done. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe we just move it to the done column. Brilliant, I can do that. Or, all right. Uh, I wanted to raise a new topic, uh, Brian. Um, yeah. So I added uh, the link for the CNCF SIGs uh, to to the doc, pull 194. Um, I wanted to understand how this is going to affect us or how we can leverage the six that are being created with the CNCF level. Um, I can speak to that a little bit. I don't know. Um... Anybody else is on the call who may have been more involved with that, uh, but I did actually review multiple versions of that proposal. So yeah, for the folks who are not aware, the CNCF TOC has been uh, trying to discussing how to scale the effort over the past six to nine months. Uh, the demand from projects to get reviewed by the TOC has been um, fairly steadily growing. And 
uh, other um, other activities um, have also been growing, like uh, project reviews for graduation from sandbox to incubation or incubation to graduated uh, and things like that. Also, we uh, had maybe a year and a half ago uh, created a list of areas where we thought there were gaps in the cloud native ecosystem where we needed to support projects and pretty much those gaps got filled and now there are probably is an, the next set of gaps we need to be looking for. Uh, but the TOC doesn't necessarily have expertise in all areas. We had a few so-called working groups like network and storage. Um, and we were looking at a way to kind of update and generalize that approach. Um, so this idea of SIGs loosely modeled after Kubernetes SIGs, uh, a number of folks from the Kubernetes community like Quentin Houle and Aaron Boyd uh, worked uh, on that proposal along with other folks um, to create kind of bodies of expertise that could do, help the TOC with some of that legwork and apply domain expertise uh, to multiple different areas. So a, a concrete set of SIGs, initial set of SIGs has been proposed. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's cast in stone, um, but you know, it would be, idea would be to continue with the CNCF's mission of fostering uh, the cloud native ecosystem by um, by growing projects in uh, an ecosystem of projects in relevant areas. Um, so these would be projects that are outside of Kubernetes um, in complementary areas. You know, networking and storage are still going to be there. They're still going to exist. They're looking at adding additional areas, for example, moving up the stack into more application deployment areas that are kind of pretty clearly out of scope for Kubernetes. Um, I think it, in terms of, there had been confusion in the past in some overlapping areas, particularly storage, um, but also networking. Hopefully that has mostly been addressed as CNI and CSI have evolved. Other storage related uh, efforts are clearly out of scope for things of interest to Kubernetes, uh, direct interest anyway. Um, so I'm hoping it will turn out to be fairly complementary. Uh, did you have sp specific thoughts in mind, Dems, about areas where you thought there would be more connections? Uh, right. So some of the questions I had was like, who from this group or uh, the overall Kubernetes community will be uh, you know, will need to go show up for those meetings. Uh, is there kind of like a reporting structure where we have to s send some information back to them? Or uh, is there uh, avenues where we can ask for help uh, from CNCF or the TOC uh, in things that we are hitting against? Um, that kind of questions. So, I mean, um... There are, there are, there's room for, okay, so first of all, there's, you know, representation on the governing board, which is obviously different from the TOC. Mm -hmm. uh, with respect to ask for help, there are, um, you know, there are, you know, multiple examples of where the, the CNCF has funded stuff for the project. Um, and I think we continue to, <clears throat> to explore where, where that makes sense and, and to continue to go down, go down that path. Now, in terms of help from the TOC, I'm not sure, you know, what you were thinking about there, Dims? Uh, I, I'm not too sure about that either. Okay. Uh, it, yeah. It was a general question on. I think it was a fairly broad question of of how do we as a Kubernetes community need to engage with the CNCF SIGs? Is that correct? That's Dems? right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think the SIGs are largely sort of under the TOC, not under the governing board, and there is no explicit connection between Kubernetes and representation into the TOC, but Brian and I both sit on, on both the steering committee and the TOC, so, you know, there is a de facto connection. Yeah, and Brendan. Oh, and Brendan also, yeah. I guess we have good representation. <laughs> but I think this is more the how, how do we encourage people to cross-pollinate from the Kubernetes community broadly with the SIGs there, so. 
you know, and where, where do the TOC members potentially see that it's important that Kubernetes um, have representation in those SIGs, the CNCF SIGs? Yeah, I think the uh, application-oriented SIG is probably the most obvious case. I can't see if Matt Farina is on, but he was involved in the SIG proposal as well. I and I, on. Yeah, so do you want to say anything about that specific area? Um, sure. Uh, so SIG apps on the Kubernetes side has long done um, both the ecosystem around applications as well as things like the workloads controllers and other efforts there. Um, the SIG application or whatever it ends up getting naming, they haven't figured out the final names for them, is kind of going to deal with that ecosystem area, looking at things like where the gaps are, what are all the projects across the system, what's going on. And we haven't really figured out how we're going to interface. Maybe there's things we don't do in Kubernetes SIG apps because it's happening in the other place. But it is one of those things we put on the roadmap for it. And I do realize this is in part my fault because I helped write up this doc. Um, and the application area was one of those things that um, Alexis and some others had in mind right off the get-go. But we're going to try and figure out what are the new roles and responsibilities so that way we don't do we'll do double duty of work and we let things happen where they are best fit. So, yeah, no, that's great, Matt. And I think that that tees it up. I, I did want to actually, um, the way that, that Brian said something, I just wanted to make it clear that, you know, we're looking for projects that are complementary um, and that fill in gaps in the ecosystem. But also one of the, the guiding principles of the CNCF and the TOC is that, um, it is okay to have competing projects that are that are sponsored from the CNCF, and we've seen that in the past. And so, you know, it's altogether possible that you know a competing project to Kubernetes could be supported and 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 uh, and adopted by the by the TOC. So, um, you know, there is no, I don't know, I don't want people to come away from this thinking that there's sort of a a you know defined sort of blessed stack. It really is is a soup of projects and it is okay if these things somewhat compete. Yeah, and I would actually phrase it as a little bit different than competing. I mean, generally we look for um, projects that take a different approach or that fill different niches. Uh, so, you know, because there are, the landscape is really huge. I think we prioritize uh, Filling out the filling the gaps before, uh, you know, fo rather than focusing on a lot of projects in a specific area. But yeah, definitely, it, just a single. We're not looking for just a single project in each area necessarily. If other projects may be promising or may make sense. So uh, right, but Brian, Joe, uh, is there an opportunity here where we can increase the cooperation between the projects that are in the same space, like uh, and you know. I think there is. I, so there. another general topic um, that is being discussed is right now, not only is there not that much interaction between projects, but there aren't, there's not much interaction between different parts of the CNCF, like between the GB and the TOC or the TOC and the end user community. And part of that was by design, but it's kind of gone overboard. So we're trying to course correct that a little bit. Um, and see if we can get more cross uh, foundational interaction. Like the projects interact almost not at all with the TOC is just yet another example. Um, well, I do think it's important to recognize that, you know, the TOC can provide services into the projects. The TOC doesn't like, can't arm twist the projects to do anything. And so, you know, part of this sort of cross pollination across projects is really one of, of creating opportunities versus using arms. Um, and I think the assumption was that a lot of this stuff would, would happen organically, but I think there might be opportunities for us to sort of try and make the magic happen. Yeah, and in many cases, the, uh, some of the CNCF principles are similar to the Kubernetes project principles, for example, in terms of um, empowering the individual projects, similar to how we try to empower our SIGs uh, to operate reasonably autonomously. So it's more like setting the framework for success and, and being an enabling organization uh, more than focus on um, uh, 
top-down governance, I would say. There are a few exceptions to that, but yeah, so there's the principal's doc. There's also the uh, graduation criteria doc, um, which is somewhat relevant. But yeah, I mean, it's still pretty nascent. Like, I don't think any of the, there any SIGs have been officially formed or had meetings or anything yet. So we'll keep an eye on that. And uh, some of us who, you know, I see four of us on the call that are also on the TOC. So we can definitely keep the communication going about uh, areas of relevance uh, to the Kubernetes community. And I'm, by the way, I'm happy to see another project a non-Kubernetes project maintainer on the TOC now as well, Matt Klein from Envoy. So um, we have a lot more project representation on the TOC now. Um, did I answer your question, Dims? Thanks, Brian. All right, so one topic, and, and this is just kind of to cue things up maybe for, for the next meeting. Um, you know, there are places where the CNCF is, is paying for people to do stuff on the Kubernetes project. There are places where, where there is that level of support. I'm wondering, and I, you know, um, if we should maybe have like a regular cadence monthly or quarterly where we review those things, actually figure out and actually look at the scope of this and figure out whether, whether we think that um, we're using those resources effectively or whether there's opportunities to, to double down or expand where we're actually engaging with the CNCF for help. What do, what do you all think about that? Yeah, so a couple more bits. So if you look at the CNCF slash service desk on GitHub, there is uh, information about how to use the service desk. Uh, for the most part, the steering committee files issues there, but I think others can. I think, yeah, Paris has as well. Um, there's an, uh, when projects get services or ask for services, uh, they get added to the list there uh, by Chris Sanishizik and others. Uh, so you can look to see what effectively what other projects have asked for and what the CNCF and LF uh, kind of know how to do, but if something's not on the list and we ask for it, then, you know, they'll probably add it to the list uh, so that other projects know that that's a thing. Um, and then other projects also have regular meetings with CNCF staff uh, to discuss how things are going and what CNCF might do. So far, we have not taken advantage of that. I didn't even know about it uh, for more than a year that it was going on. Um, there is actually a calendar with these meetings in it. Uh, so you can see, for example, when the Envoy uh, meeting is or the GRPC meeting and things like that. So if that's something we want, uh, it is something we could try to see if it is useful. It might be cool too to get uh, like uh, how, mu how much you're spending on technical writers, advocates, uh, things like that too. It'd be nice if we had a backlog that describes some of our asks from the Kubernetes project onto the CNCF and timeliness, like for example, the performance effort is one. Uh, the What we're gonna do with the case <coughs> infra working group, ideally we've talked about handing this off to the CNCF, but we've never actually had any follow-up there. So I think it's kind of on our uh, shoulders to actually make sure that we have some level of tracking and, and some level of, uh, of you know, accountability for making sure that these efforts actually get funded and executed on because apparently they're spending money on things, but I have, there's no visibility or transparency to any of this. Well, and that's, that's the point that I was trying to make. I think like, you know, as, as the steering committee, we have an oversight responsibility in terms of if money is being spent on behalf of the project to make sure that, that we're, you know, we're tracking and, and keeping on top of that. Oh, the governing board has a, a public meeting, their first public meeting, I think it's on the 19th, so next week. Um, I'm, I was going to go with bells on, but... Uh, <laughs> That's good to know. Governing board has a I think, I mean, I, Michelle, well, Michelle told me about it. Is, that the, is it this the same one? Yeah. Uh, I, don't I didn't know hear about that. About it. Yeah. There, there's, <laughs> the next one's going to be at the... Uh, the, the, the first leadership summit. Yeah. So Michelle was going to have a 
public meeting around their particular diverse, um, and the CNCF community maintainers felt represented and we're talking to her and Brandon Phillips. So oh, that might or be the it. governing board. Or yeah, the I see. Yes. Board. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they're the two yeah, contributor yes, reps. Yes, yes, yes. So okay, they're yes. collecting input yes. from contributors. Okay. Right. Well, this, I, I guess this could be one of the to inputs. take the GP. Yep. Uh, yeah. So the, yeah. So that has come up before, and it's actually yeah, kind of a GB topic in the past. Uh, when I've asked for it, uh, a spreadsheet was shared with me by Dan um, with the list of current things. It's not. There, yeah, but the transparency of budget is a long-standing, long-standing. Well, I, mean, I don't even think we need to see like numbers there. I just think like if we could track like here's the like five efforts that are being funded by the CNCF. Do we yeah. feel like these things are, you know, on track? Do we feel like these are the right place to invest? That type of thing. Um, do you just want to start a thread with Dan and Chris on that, Joe? With that, I suggest just starting a thread with Dan and Chris on okay. that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll almost certainly they are tracking it somehow, and yeah, if if we just say, well, we don't even need budget numbers, I think that would make it much easier to to make the list public. Right. The, the conformance, I am trying to pay attention to it, but I I don't know how well they've progressed or how much they are spending. Um, uh, well, so Aaron is not on the call, right. and he's kind of been shepherding those contractors. Um, in terms of handing off, I don't think we're, other than enforcement, we're not really handing off anything to anybody. So I'm not really sure uh, what that's about. Uh, but for sure, if the contractors are not adding value, we should not uh, continue with that. But since Aaron's not on, I suggest we don't discuss that specific issue. Yeah, that's not an update. Uh, so and the other one that uh, Tim St. Clair asked uh, was uh, the uh, working group that we have on moving resources out uh, from the Google uh, infrastructure to CNCF funded infrastructure. Uh, so uh, we have a project board and we are trying to get the numbers. We are not spending much right now. Uh, we have just a few things uh, in progress. Um, we have a GK cluster where we are running a few things now. Uh, then we are trying to set up uh, staging repositories for artifacts. Um, then um, a few other, uh, we already worked with uh, DNS stuff has moved over. Um, so it's a DNS, GCR, yeah, those are the three major things that we are working on right now. Uh, but over a period of time, we want to make sure that uh, people like cloud providers and cluster API providers, they will be able to publish their artifacts um, and things like that. So if you are interested in that work, Anybody who's interested in that work, please um, find me on Slack. There is, we have a work, working group for infrastructure. I'm, I'm just worried about like, from a, the CNCF is spending money on this separate project, that there's a responsible party at the end to make sure that there's success. I know that there are folks inside the Kubernetes community that I highly trust that will do a good job, but at the other, at the other end, the, who are the actual owners that are actually going to be owning this process on the other side and are they spun up and uh, you know because we are going to have requirements like we have requirements today uh, for example like we're, we have a problem today with AWS accounts that's that's every every AWS build is blocked correct across yeah. the entire project right, right. and we, we need a person a choke point at the CNCF that will be the responsible party for the whole project uh, that will be uh, responsible for making sure that this doesn't happen, right? Right, right, Tim. So the uh, uh, the main person that we work with today is uh, Ehor. Uh, Ehor comes to all the infra meetings um, and uh, helps uh, with the billing stuff, looking at uh, the billing reports and things like that. So he's our main contact. So on the AWS side, uh, it is currently stuck with um, we we. We uh, choked the throat of Ehor, but then uh, it's actually with the AWS folks at this point, uh, the ball is in their court. Yes, it is a sad situation right now. Uh, for about more than two weeks, uh, we've been down at least one job we had to uh, nuke or at least uh, disable for now. And uh, the people in COPS are not able to work because uh, they, they don't know if they merge code, uh, whether things will work when uh, you know, the, 
uh, the account gets enabled and the CI starts working again. So we definitely need to escalate it more, but I don't know where else we can escalate it to. Yeah, I, I think my, my primary reason of bringing it up is that there needs to be an accountable person that actually is going to own the maintenance of this infrastructure and possibly report back to this group periodically or to report back to the other testing SIGs on the state of things. And that visibility is zero to me. Right, I agree. We should ask them to nominate one person to be that uh, from the CNCF side. We could also ask to have a project meeting with them as they do with other groups with the steering committee. And then it could be either a portion of one of these meetings or an additional meeting. Um, I think that's, I think that's the right way to start. And then we go from there to make, to hold them accountable just as we hold ourselves accountable. I want to make sure that we leave time for the community questions that are in here because there's at least one on the Slack update and then I dropped something that is uh, not pressing but a, a return discussion from last time on the calendar on the agenda. But we you should go first. No, let's go with, I want to do the community stuff. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to give everybody an update on Slack uh, and quick context for a lot of folks on the call that may not have context. Um, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before that, excuse me if I am, I, I'm already forgetting my dates, uh, around 8, 8.30 p.m. Pacific time, Sunday evening, uh, we had several bad actors uh, join Slack, uh, potentially uh, uh, use a vulnerability that Slack has against us uh, to display uh, over 75 porn images and harass many folks, take on their personalities, and harass them in direct messages. Uh, we banned several accounts uh, and learned a lot in the process. Um, we have Slack down right now. What that means is the Slack inviter, which is slack.kates.io, is um, is offline. Uh, it's displaying and routing traffic to discuss.kubernetes.io. Uh, we have roughly 60,000 uh, members on Slack. Uh, if we if we know that all 26,000 contributors to Kubernetes uh, are on Slack, that's still one third of that population is contributors. So we have tons of consumers that take advantage of uh, of Slack. Uh, the Slack administrators are working diligently around the clock to attempt to achieve quorum around uh, what to do next. We are taking the ultra conservative approach, uh, which also some admins disagree with, um, to keep it down until we have heard from Slack that the uh, potential vulnerability is not a vulnerability. We have filed a hacker one report. Um, I'm not comfortable sharing the rest of the details there yet uh, publicly. Uh, I will shortly within the next couple of days. Um, but moving on from that, um, we need a couple things to be met before we can open up the Slack invites. And one is that that piece of data from Slack. Uh, others is that we need to increase our, moder our moderation team by double, sometimes uh, depending on who, who you talk to as far as an admin, some people would say triple and quadruple. Uh, based off of the just the usage of Slack that we have. Um, and then also, uh, so moderators, Slack, and then just general who's responsible for what. Right now, uh, SIG contributor experience is chartered into Slack. Uh, as a sub-project owner for that folder, I can tell you that I feel like we are officially out of scope. Um, I think that we should take this to the TOC and the end user committee to have a broader conversation of whose role is this uh, and things along those lines. Uh, again, I personally feel that our, our being the moderators and contributors that we have that are doing this role uh, could, be, could have their time spent in other more pressing community matters. So I feel like at this point in time, it would be best served for us to uh, talk to the end user committee about uh, about this. Brian. Uh, so Dan, 
Cone previously offered to have CNCF staff moderate mailing lists. Does that offer not apply to Slack? That or? offer does not apply to Slack. Uh, Chris confirmed uh, during our retro last week uh, in contributor experience that CNCF does not provide moderators for their community projects, but for some reason will be okay with mailing lists. Um, <laughs> uh, they are going to be providing one moderator. Well, they actually provide two because Eeyore is an active moderator for us in the European time zones. Um, but uh, they will be providing another, which is Taylor. So she's going to be coming on, but we need like 40 others at this point. Um, that's sort of the, the update at this point. Questions? Uh, Paris, uh, thanks for the heroic efforts, uh, especially that weekend and following on from there. Uh, I know you had some help too, so I, but I don't remember all the names there, uh, but thanks for leading that effort. Oh, no worries. Thank you. Thank you, Dim. There was ton, there's tons of people that are working on this right now, uh, trying to figure it out. So uh, many thanks to everybody that's banging their heads against walls. Uh, we are, I mean, I can definitely publicly make the comment that Slack does not support open communities. That is not open source. Uh, open communities, meaning uh, that there is no manual addition of members that you have a Slack inviter. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is the, I think, misconception that people have with Slack and open source. Uh, they only support, uh, uh, they only support communities that have their own process as far as how people are coming into their community, aka enterprise companies who have HR departments and then they can just fire someone. Unfortunately, we just can't fire Gamergate folks. Uh, trust me, if we could, I would. Um, <laughs> you're fired. Uh, <laughs> Um, so I think this is just something that we need to evaluate because a lot of time and energy goes into Slack, uh, not only moderation, but curation and uh, just getting people together in general. So I think it's, uh, it's high time that we figure this out. Yeah, so I see a question from Justin about should we move to the OSS? And that has come up before. I don't know if we seriously investigate anything. We have 60,000 people in Slack now? Yes. So there's a number of challenges in, in that. One, it doesn't fix the moderation problem. It doesn't fix the exploit problem. Um, it does uh, mean that we have to forklift 60,000 people of whom we will lose a number of them because Slack is becoming more and more, more, and more part of people's daily you know, work environment. So there, we have talked about this in the past when it was a much smaller community yeah. on Slack, and it's we come to the conclusion that it wasn't really viable in that way. It didn't fix the problems we wanted to. We have um, we actually have a planning doc that we plan to share in the next, I'd say, 24 to 48 hours that lists all our options and things along those lines. I mean, I think our perfect uh, our perfect case scenario at this point is for Slack to come back and say, "Hey, everything's great." Uh, and then we increase our moderation team and uh, and then involve the consumer community as well. Uh, I feel like that's our perfect scenario. Um, Joe is raising his Joe. hand. Sorry. Yeah, I think I just want to call out that, you know, for user support type stuff, which I think, you know, Slack plays a lot of roles in our community, um, moving something like to the, to the discourse that, Contribuac set, set up a while ago might be a good good way to go. Um, that is much more tailored towards more open communities with with the right tooling around that. Um, it also is probably more searchable, more threaded, more on topic for that type of of, of discussion. Um, Stack Overflow also. So I think it's, we can shunt some of the activity happening in Slack into other uh, other venues. I do want to actually say that like. Like George, um, yeah, so George posted this tweet, I'm putting that there, calling on sort of trying to get folks to get more involved into, into, di into the discourse uh, uh, hosted thing there. Um, and- uh, Discord is open source. Yeah, it is open source. Um, so yeah, if, if, if folks can get involved and or signal boost that, that'd be, that'd be appreciated. Right. Uh, one other thing, though, is uh, we need some mechanism uh, right now where, when uh, when you know, you ha well, the, for example, one scenario was somebody's uh, colleague uh, needed an invite. So can we have like a... That is coming within the next couple of hours. We need, we're looking for a couple more admins to give quorum. 
uh, but right now the proposed manual process on the table, temporary. Uh, we will have a date on it as far as how of when we review. But if you're a contributor uh, and you just need to ask a somebody in a SIG that already has access, and then they would go into Slack admins, and we would do a process that we do, which is a similar to channel creation. Um, unfortunately, we can't do that for consumers too because we would be doing that for over a hundred people a day, uh, and then one of our jobs would be full time administration. Got it. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. The OSS solutions wouldn't solve with the moderation this no. you're describing, right? Well, I mean, they the OSS solutions do they don't solve for everything, but they do like the discourse option. Uh, it solves for blocking at IP level, where Slack only allows for blocking at the user level, uh, which means that they could respawn with another email address or something along those lines. Um, but I think discourse is regularly fighting security and moderation battles, whereas Slack does not, because that's not their use case. Uh, I don't know, maybe if it is now, considering 10 plus Slack work groups have been hit with the same thing. Uh, so, you know, TBD. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, just a time check. We have about five minutes left. Um, did we have anything else from the community before we jump? Because well, in general, I wanted to raise the issue of, of how we want to take agenda items for mm -hmm. future meetings from the community. Um, whether they should just be plussed into a doc or file issues to steering or discuss or email steering. Um, I don't know if anybody has any opinions about that. I think um, Michelle and her original message encouraged people to just add add items to the to the doc. That's a that's a good way if folks want to want to get seen. Did did we agree on if we're doing this like what the regularity of this is? I have you down for biweekly. That's what we set the the meeting and things. I think today was very useful. Yeah. To have other folks here. Yeah. Biweekly, you mean every every other, every every other week. So not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that. Which is all of them. Okay. Yeah. 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 For, for, for those auditing the class, there was some concern of like, you know, because because usually we're pretty informal about the steering committee meetings. What would it be like with a larger audience? And so there was a little bit of trepidation going in, but we're like, you know, how bad could it be? And it turns out things turned out well. So, yay. <laughs> yeah, so thank you, everybody. And Stephen, to ask your question, would it be helpful to have SIGPM crawl the backlog for y'all? Yes, it would. It would be helpful for SIGPM to help us in all sorts of project management aspects of, of the project. So we can have a longer conversation about that for next time. Can you time. help contributor experience too? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe the other 30 SIGs. Um, so, so as part of the charter, we're, I mean, we're planning on redoing the SIGPM charter and we're trying to get ideas. So that will be one of them. Yeah, so Jace created the um, tracking board originally. Uh, which was super helpful. I think the tracking board has been useful. Um, but yeah, doing things like chasing down open issues to make sure we have the right people present or we have updates on things, um, that would be super helpful. I'm adding this as a future topic as as I move as as I also move the leadership expectations of chairs boomerang because we had said we want to talk more about it in the last meeting. So I put that also in future topics. Oh. All right. Any el anything else? Wow, silence in the room. <laughs> okay, right. either that or George just muted everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you all for joining our first public live real lo real time steering committee meeting. Thanks, everyone. And then, Paris, are you going to get this posted to YouTube or you need help? No, we'll get it posted to YouTube. All you good. got it all figured out. All right, cool. Thanks, Paris. Yeah, yeah, no, that's so awesome. Yeah, thank you, Paris, for setting this all up. <laughs> thank you, thank all you. All right, thank you. Bye. All right, thanks, y'all.